Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today. My name is Emily Bradley, and um, I'm part of the Medit Education and Support team. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how to create multi-occlusions with the Medit. Um, as, as always, we kind of like to keep our webinars short and sweet, so they're easy to go back and rewatch. Um, you will be receiving this webinar after we, about 24 hours after the webinar completes. Um, many of you have not been re receiving the recording, so please email me at emily.bradley at medit.com if you have any questions. Um, I'd also like to hear from you if you have questions about different tools and apps you'd like to use. Um, we'll go ahead and build a webinar around that. Um, so anyways, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, as always, we will be taking questions. So if you do have any questions, just go ahead and click the little chat box on the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and um, we'll try to get to your questions before the webinar ends. Um, and again, I just really wanna kind of reiterate, we wanna hear what you want to learn more about. So we wanna make this about the end users. If there's something you have questions about, scan techniques, scan path, and so forth, we have a lot more webinar topics coming out, so please reach out to us. Now, what I did here is I, I went ahead and I pre-scanned a maxilla and I pre-scanned the mandible. Um, like I mentioned, we'd like to keep these short, so we just like to address the topic at hand. So if I hover over this next scan stage, it's going to pop up that seclusion. Um, okay, so you'll see that the icons at the bottom of the page change uh, when I switch to occlusion, and you, I have two options here at the bottom. I've got first occlusion and I've got second occlusion. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take basically centric occlusion. It would be the same as having a patient bite down and placing the scanner in their buccal corridor and scanning up and down to pick up that information. Now it's important as you're scanning in that buccal corridor that you're picking up as much tissue as you are teeth. You wanna give the software as much information as it can to match up to the maximal and mandible that you've previously scanned. And you can see as it turns green there, that um, it's registered that bite. And also if your sound's on, if the audio is on, you'll be able to actually see um, or hear kind of a, it go, a ding ding. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and take the second occlusion. So we'll place the scanner on the other side. You'll, say, you'll see kind of due to the model that I'm scanning right here that um, I'm gonna start, start a little further forward on this one just because um, I have a dentulous area and I find on this model anyways, I have a little bit easier time taking the bite um, if I start a little bit further on the teeth and work my way back. Um, generally speaking though, I think it's really important to start towards the back of the mouth and scan vertically up and down as you pull the scanner out of the mouth. Um, the cheek will give you least less resistance at that point in time. Okay. So we've got our first occlusion and our second occlusion. And what I wanna show you here, if it registers within the first two teeth, let's say it goes green really quickly, you still wanna keep scanning and pick up a little bit more information there. It's really helpful to give that to your laboratory. It's just nice to have more information um, as far as, as the bite goes. So we've got our first occlusion and second occlusion here. Now, if I go over to the left-hand side here, you see this is the multi-occlusion tool. So this will allow me to add more occlusions. And it's, they're actually called occlusal relationships. So if I click on this little pen here, I can change the occlusal relationship to whatever I would like the name to be. And generally, I would suggest that you change it to maybe the sleep device that is being manufactured you know, with the second occlusion or, or this, the different occlusion. Um, but because we're not super creative today, we're just going to type um, second occlusion here. Well, that's what we'll name it. And again, um, to open and close any tool, you're just gonna click on it again if you wanna get that box out of the way. Um, you can see there our first occlusion, occlusal relationship, and then our second occlusal relationship. So what I'm gonna do is open the model just a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead, just like I did the first time, place the scanner in the patient's mouth, and we'll go up and down vertically as we pull that scanner out of the mouth. Now, Generally, it's nice to scan on myself or on a person, but when I'm doing these webinars, um, it's nice to have a model so I can kind of talk through them. Um, you can see it goes green as soon as it registers there. And then just like we did for the first occlusal relationship, we need to click on our second occlusion. Now, if I was doing a, um, a quadrant scan, I obviously would only need one occlusion. So let's go ahead and pick up the information here. Go vertically up and down. 
Very good. Okay, so we've just registered our first and second occlusion for our second occlusal relationship. So now what we can do is look at the differences between these occlusions. Let me move this model out of the way here so we have a better view here. So let's go ahead, click on occlusal relationship two. You can see how that mandible dropped open, occlusal relationship one. So you can see the difference between those two occlusal relationships. So let's go ahead for the fun of it and let's create uh, an occlusal relationship too. Now we know that we can rename this if we want to based off of our need for this third occlusal relationship. But for this webinar, we're just going to leave it as occlusal relationship three. And then again, I'm going to change my bite on my model just a little bit. Now this is a little bit easier to do when you are working with a patient because they can move into, you know, side excursions or, you know, towards the incisal edge and so forth. Um, on model, it's a little bit more difficult to hold the model still as you're picking up the different um, occlusal relationships, but we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so there's our first occlusion for occlusal relationship three. Okay, so since this is a, a full arch scan, we're gonna go ahead and take the second occlusion here at the bottom. And you'll notice that as you add new information, that the green little check mark appears in the box. So you know whenever there's scan data in there. Most of you are very seasoned scanners, so you know this, this is quite a, a simple process for you. You understand quite nicely. And again, it registered quite quickly. I always suggest to pick up a little bit more information when you're taking a bite. So we've got our occlusal relationship three here. Let's go ahead and move this model out of the way so we can get a better view of what's going on here. And let's check our occlusal relationship one. So that's basic, basically centric. Okay, our second occlusion as we named it. And then our third occlusal relationship. So you can see how it really dropped open. Um, I, I opened that, that third bite a little more. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've experimented with this quite a lot and you can open the bite quite a bit but generally it's only a few millimeters at most probably is it, you know that you would actually be opening that bite so what i want to show you here we can create an occlusal relationship four if we want to an occlusal relationship five so you can go up to five different occlusal relationships on one patient and one case now in order to get rid of it you can just click that little garbage can there and just delete it we're going to stick with three for now and um, what I kind of want to talk about now is many of you have the I-700. So what you see here is basic scan mode. This is for the I-5 and the I-7. Well, if we were going to do the I-7, you're going to see here, actually, let's go back before we jump into remote control mode and let's create a occlusal relationship four so you can see how it relates and translates through to remote mode. So in basic scan mode, we're going to go down to the bottom here and let's create a occlusal relationship four. All right, so from here, I'm gonna long hold the white button on the remote control. So basically my scanner, there's a white button right below the blue start stop button. At the top of the screen here, you can see a first occlusion, so occlusal relationship one, or occlusal relationship four. So we've started creating an occlusal relationship four in basic scan mode, and here we are in remote mode. And again, to get into remote mode, you're going to long hold the remote control button and it opens it up. You'll feel a little vibration in the scanner as it opens. We'll take the scanner into the buccal corridor and vertically scan up and down just like we did before. Okay, now let's long hold the blue button in order to switch to the next scan stage. So it'll say next scan stage here. Use that white remote control button, say yes, click to the right. And it's going to move us, if you see at the top of the screen there, into second occlusion, occlusal relationship four. So we still know what occlusal relationship we're in, and this is the second side that we're actually going to take here. So what we'll do is go ahead and place the scanner again in the buccal corridor, and we're going to scan up and down in nice flowing movements. It's really important that you're connecting those scans. Oops, skipped a little there. And everything, flows. You don't want to skip around when you're taking that bite. That information is really important. Okay, so now let's utilize the remote control mode for just a second. See at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you can see the word rotate. I can rotate, I can short-click the white button, and I can pan it across my screen. 
and I can short click the white button again and I can zoom in and out. So this allows me to use the remote control without ever going back and touching my keyboard. And where do I find the, re the multi-occlusion button in um, remote control mode? You're gonna long hold and go into settings and then data and down to multi-occlusion. Okay, so it looks here, we've got, let's, let's check through our different occlusal relationships. Occlusal relationship one, basically centric here. Now we've renamed our second occlusion, as you, as you remember. So we're going to drop down into second occlusion here. And we're just doing this using the white remote control button on our i700 scanner. Okay, let's check occlusal relationship three. Now we really opened it on this one. So you can kind of rotate through your different occlusal re relationships and make sure it's what you're looking for. Occlusal relationship four, we, we brought a little closer to centric again. Um, and then also you can add a new occlusal group here. Again, up to five total. So in order to exit your multi-occlusion tool here, we're just going to use the remote control button and press it to the left. And again, I just like to kind of um, touch on the i700 features here. Um, the rotate, the zoom, the pan, the really great features to use so you don't need to go back, um, touch your keyboard, contaminate the mouse and so forth. And to exit remote control mode, we're just going to long hold the white button and you can click to the left and you're back in basic scan mode. So for those of you with the 500, you can see that the software is the same as with the i7. And there's all our occlusions right there. So this one was kind of short and sweet. And you know, I thought about adding multiple features to this webinar, but I think that this is such a valuable tool. Like I said, we like to keep these webinars kind of um, short so they're easy to go back and watch and create a library for you of specific tools and specific scan techniques and details. So it's really easy for you to tune in later. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. Um, please email me directly again at emily.bradley at medit.com if you are not receiving the recordings. And if you have something you would like to learn more about, we'd love to hear from you. Um, everybody, thank you again for joining and we look forward to hearing you next time. And if you're wondering where to find the recording links again, um, check Medit's, Medit's Facebook page. And um, yeah, we'll continue to post um, the, the recording registration links there. Okay, thank you and have a great night. Bye-bye.